If you've been following my work on Instagram, you may have seen me drop this post recently. Uh, it's a new project called Glowbox. Um, it took me um, probably a, a few weeks to get to this point where I've got some finished renders. So uh, I did this in Blender um, and then I photoshopped it just with a bit of color and um, you know just some post-processing effects. And so today I'm just going to be walking you through my entire process from start to finish. Yeah, let's jump into it. So kicking things off, I use a file system which helps to reduce memory usage. So I've got a architecture file and I've also got a planting file. Basically they link into each other. You start out just whenever you initiate a project, you're going to start out with the architecture. You're just going to model it and then you're going to save that file and then you're going to um, basically add planting around that. You're going to delete the architecture and then you're going to link that into the original file. So it sounds a little bit complicated, but I'll walk you through it. So I start out with the main file where, where I model the architecture. And then when I have a decent amount of work done in there, I will do a save as, I'll call it the planting file. I'll open that up and then get to work on setting up the planting. I'll start by deleting all the architecture and then linking the architecture file in so that we can now see the architecture, but not interact with it. This allows us to place the plants in any landscaping elements accurately and the next step is to save the landscape file and then go back into the architecture file and link the landscape file into the architecture file. We will then see the landscape file in there, however we will not be able to interact with it. And this is really good if the file is going to be pretty heavy. If you're working with a lot of planting, it's absolutely essential. It just allows you to reduce memory load. and even viewing things in the 3D scene is just so much easier. It's like, it's a big difference. If it's a really small like interior project where you don't have any planting or anything like super heavy, you can get away with just one, one file and just have everything in it, render everything in it. But quite often my scenes, I'm just throwing things at the scene and it's, you know, loading up the memory usage. There's always a way around optimizing scenes. So that's that's my approach to how I set up the file initially. All right, so moving on to the uh, modeling, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of it, um, but there are a few things that I think I have um, uniquely done for this project. Um, and anything else that's really basic, I suggest you guys look at like, maybe Blender Guru's architecture tutorial just to get like basic, you know, uh, get a basic understanding of how to create boxes and shape them and stuff like that. Um, but specifically, I want to walk you guys through how I created the bricks for this project because it was a really big feature of this project. So let me show you that now. So I started with one brick. I used three different array modifiers to create the offset I want and allow for the mortar. So for the mortar, I created a plane that sits slightly back from the brick. In areas where I have perforations, which are like holes in the brickwork, I use boxes instead of planes as they wrap around the brick on all faces and it saves a lot of time. And that's specifically talking about the mortar. So with the lighting, I used an HDRI that I use quite a lot. It's just a great overcast HDRI. It's called Clotesly Blee. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's on HDRI Haven. You'll be able to, you'll be able to search it up. And with the interior lighting, I pretty much just made some cylinders, added a simple emission shader with a black body color node, and set them to 2700K, which is a good warm color that's also using real world measurements. So when it comes to lighting with an HDRI, it's essential that the interior lights are balanced with the exterior, uh, with the natural skylight, and that just allows it to to feel realistic. And that's like quite a common thing that um, even I've done in the past is like it's just not it just doesn't seem right if the interior lights are just way too bright and then the the outside is also bright. It's just like it just doesn't feel right. So you need to find the right HDRI and you also want to make sure that your interior lights aren't too bright. Um, so if you're going to go for a night scene, you want to go for probably quite a dark HDRI and then with the lights, you know, find a light intensity that just looks realistic. And I definitely recommend looking at references for that. So for the materiality in general, I used 
pretty much all of the materials from Polygon. And I mean, you can't go wrong with those that great. The implementation using the plugin is really easy. Um, not sponsored by them, but I just find they're, um, they're a great resource and they allow me to produce work quicker, which is really important. But specifically, I want to talk about the brick material because that was quite a new technique that I learned for this um, for this project so let's jump into it so i started with a brick material from quixel photoshopped out the mortar on all of the texture maps and then imported that into blender the reason why is because i used geometry nodes to randomly shift the uv maps on each brick arrayed along with this i added a slight brightness and darkness node setup to add variation the beauty with this method is that I can array as many bricks as my computer can handle and without applying any array modifiers, the UVs and brightnesses of each brick will be randomized. So when it comes to actually rendering, I pretty much never use the denoiser, the GPU denoiser or CPU denoiser. And the reason why is because I normally tick the denoising data render layer. Um, and then I normally render it for around 2,000 samples, maybe a little bit higher if it's if it's a darker scene because you might get a little bit more grain. And then in the compositor afterwards, I'll actually use the denoising node to actually denoise it. And I just find it's a little bit less destructive. You can control whether you actually want to denoise it in Blender or not. Sometimes it's it's better not to, but that's just my process and it's worked pretty well so far. So I exported it as a TIFF imported it into Photoshop and then got that into Camera Raw, which is a plugin in Photoshop that's very similar to Lightroom. At this stage, it's all down to personal preference and sharing the settings won't be useful as it's completely based off the brightness and time of day of the image. But you should pay particular attention to the overall values of the image by enabling color filters on your computer and activating it with Windows C. This allows you to see the values in black and white much easier to then adjust the brightness and darkness and contrast of the image. Then you wanna move your color mixer and make sure that the colors are in the right hue, saturation, and luminosity. The first two sections are great to make some decent changes, but I'd be cautious about changing the luminosity too much as it can make the image feel weird. For night scenes, I like to raise the luminosity of the orange and yellow tones to give it a glow effect, but not too much. You should be doing the majority of that in Blender. And with the planting, I use the New Zealand pack from Glow Plants. I've just found that to be really fantastic in terms of quality. Um, again, not sponsored by them, but uh, it's just pretty much the only planting besides a few plants from 3D Shaker that I use a bit like trees and stuff like that. So I think that's pretty much it for this project. Um, I hope you guys have found this, you know, helpful for understanding what goes into a scene like this. Let me know down below if you've enjoyed this and um, if you want to see any more behind the scenes of some of my work, let me know also. Check out my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture. Like and sub if you found this useful because I don't want you to miss anything. And I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.